Welcome to FOSS North, the virtual edition. We would like to thank all our sponsors and partners in this difficult situation. Our gold sponsors, Luxoft and Ansible by Red Hat. Our silver sponsors, ITRS Group and Make It Right. Our base sponsors. Our partner projects, the open source community and the region of Gothenburg. And a huge thanks to our awesome community. This would not have been possible without you. Uh, my name is Anders Björkland. I've been working with containers and doing some different presentations on it. And I would like to share a maybe lesser known container platform. And it's called Singularity. And um, it's optimized for something uh, called HPC, which I will describe what that is, high performance computing. But I find it also uh, useful for enterprise computing and it has a lot of security things it has addressed. So uh, in high performance computing uh, scenarios, you normally have multiple users uh, logging into a single shared server or multiple servers. Uh, you typically have a shared network home folder. So you have the same home on all machines. Uh, you typically don't have uh, access to uh, the privileged user, the root user, and we will come back to this. Uh, there is, of course, a sysadmin that will have this access, but you as a regular user will not have it. And this sysadmin will impose strict re security requirements since you're sharing this environment with lots of other users. And typically, this system runs uh, older system versions. In the HPC uh, community, there is a high need for performance, um, that is CPU, IO, uh, disk network performance, and also uh, access to specialized hardware like GPU or MPI between different servers. So uh, that's a typical uh, scenario in this disk. And uh, unfortunately, I'm, I don't have a supercomputer myself, but uh, I work a lot with big C++ builds and uh, it shares a lot of these uh, typical performance requirements. So uh, you have an old system and you want to run new um, software and then you typically turn to Docker. And then you have your regular user log into the system and thinking, yeah, this is a Linux system. I know how to use this. We'll just do a Docker run. And then, uh, so you find a Docker client somewhere and then you do a Docker run and then you're faced with a super helpful message that you also need a Docker daemon running somewhere. Okay, so you try to remember how do we start that one. So you turn to system D and you try to start the Docker daemon. And you get another helpful message saying that you are not the sudo on this system. And uh, that also that will be reported. So what do you do? You turn to your sysadmin and you say to them, yeah, I would like to run this Docker daemon that lets me run stuff. Um, and then they come back with a helpful uh, response like, no, you can't do that because we will not audit this system. And then, yeah, you stuck with the legacy versions of whatever that you log into. And, and then you uh, get a bit desperate and you try something else. So you turn to, let's start a virtual machine that we can uh, log in. And, um, there is this um, party called Docker Machine, and you it will let you start uh, up a VM, assuming you have a way to do that. And then you can connect to this VM and try to do your stuff. And uh, while you're doing that, then you realize that um, maybe this VM is not, maybe I only get a part of uh, the things I'm doing here. And uh, I seem to be in a completely new system and all my files went missing and I can't find my tools and those GPU devices seem to be gone as well. And um, well, I still don't have the full network access because my sysadmin has blocked some of it. So yeah, you have some issues there because you're on a new machine now and not on the computer you just left. So you try to find out, find other ways to do this. And there are some new products also, um, 
options to old projects that you run uh, containers without being root. And typically these systems require the newer kernel in order to work perfectly. And uh, typically you don't have that. So that might be a showstopper. And you might also need some new version of shadow or something that will let you run. And then maybe the file system performance is not what you used to on the native system or the network performance is not what you used to. And you're still running as root in the container and your files are not accessible and all that things. So what if there was a different way to do this? And that's where the singularity project comes in. So the singularity is a Linux container platform. It's optimized for this HPC scenario, and it also works in the enterprise setting. It's fairly new. Uh, version one was released in 2016, and there was a rewrite in the Go programming language in 2018 with version three. Previously, it was written in the C programming language. It's uh, sponsored by the um, um, Lawrence Berkeley Lab Laboratory, which is then uh, housing some of these supercomputers, and it's uh, open source and a BSD license. And uh, it uh, uses now a, a single file format where everything needed to run your container is uh, included in a single file. Uh, and this file uh, is uh, both executable and immutable by default, and it can be signed by the sysadmin, and it can be hosted on these um, network file systems and everything. And it, it, it is also built on demand when you run it um, from a Docker image, or you can create it yourself using a definition file. Mm -hmm. And this is now where I try to demo how this tool works. And hopefully you can still see it. Yeah, so uh, I'm running as myself in my normal directory. And uh, when I run some basic commands, they look kind of similar to what they would do in Docker. We'll see the comparison before. So when I run something that is not existing on the machine, it will be converted to this native SIF format. And when I run it, I will see that I'm running as myself and I still have access to my files. And you can also create this uh, SIF images separately ahead of time. Uh, from uh, existing Docker images. These are not signed because typically you don't know how that Docker image was created, but you can sign it in a separate step. Just create an uh, executable file. So you can execute this and it will run through Singularity Run and you, you are inside your container. And the format itself is similar to ELF or other container formats that will, it will package different things. And you can see that the file system is stored, compressed on your disk. So it's not unpacked like in Docker. So that can save some space as well. And when you do the similar commands in Docker, it would typically uh, run as the root user. And it will uh, also normally create a new file system for you. Which then can be somewhat confusing if you're trying to use your regular tools and you just wanted to use some newer uh, system files. Uh, so, if you want to uh, do it uh, um, as an experiment, uh, you can um, make your uh, um, image writable and you can make um, your, uh, uh, your container actually contain stuff. And you can also run uh, with a rootless. These are available as options. They're just not the default. Uh, in addition to the singularity and in itself, there's also uh, support for Kubernetes for orchestrating. There's support for running on Mac and soon on Windows. And you can get commercial support, including a container library and a remote builder of images. And that is singularity. Thank you. Thanks. I have a question here. Are you ready? Yeah. 
Thanks uh, for the talk, by the way. Is there a reason why to not use a hypervisor setup per user research group in the HPC settings? Uh, so the main reason would be that you either require 110% of the hardware you're running on, so you're trying to get every last bit of performance out of it. You typically optimize for the micro architecture you're on, or uh, you have concerns about memory usage. Uh, maybe some machines are idling and hogging memory from other users on the same machine, considerations like that. But uh, that is uh, available as an option, of course. And uh, if you require specific kernel modules and so on, that's probably the way you want to go then, because uh, as you know, the containers will still share the host kernels. So. 